In this tutorial, I will teach you the B minor, three octave, melodic minor scales as they're required for 24-25 scales for Coda Honor Symphony and high school all-state orchestras. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the fingering and a lot of the techniques as outlined in my book, Practical Scales and Arpeggios for Preparation for All-State. And although the exact requirement as far as the slurs and the, the rhythm of the scale is a little bit different, this book will be invaluable and this tutorial will be fully based on the exact requirement for the audition. This video is timestamped, so if you want to jump around to the part that interests you most, go ahead and do that. What makes a scale a scale, whether major or melodic minor, is the patterns of whole and half steps. Any scale might follow whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step pattern. Interestingly enough, the melodic minor scale uses the same number of whole and half steps, but in totally different order. What makes the melodic minor scale difficult is it's essentially two scales. One scale going up with raised sixth and seventh notes, and another scale down with lowered sixth and seventh notes. And that makes it necessary to have one fingering going up, another fingering coming down, essentially being two scales in one. If you want to improve your scales, I would highly recommend getting this book and going over all of the text as well as suggestions of how to find your positions as well as how to practice your scales effectively and efficiently with very detailed explanations of how and why. You'll notice that every three octave major and melodic minor scale in a book has three notes added at the beginning and the end. That is to make the total number of notes in any scale 48, which allows us to play slur 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24 without having to stop, and you can go beginning to end. The required audition piece has eighth note followed by two sixteenths, and that is to make the total number of one octave equal to eight sixteenths. In the demo video, I will show exactly as per the requirement, but you can learn either or. There's not a right or wrong answer, but for the audition, I would recommend playing exactly as seen on the page. First, we're going to play through slowly at eighth note equals 60 beats per minute. No slurs, slowly. We're going to practice each shift separately. We'll start with the A string, C sharp to D. First to third position. When you shift, it's very important to know the distance between the fingers. Here it's a half step. And make sure while you're shifting, you slide. You want to feel it, hear it, and see it. So feel how far you're sliding. Do not jump. See it, look at it, and hear it. Start slow and speed up. one third position on the E string B to C sharp it's a whole step between B and C sharp next so that was third to fifth position now it's going to be fifth to seventh D to E now very important the next part you're going to play whole steps you're going to keep your fingers down and in the last shift, you're going to slide the entire hand and that will get your fingers into a new place. So let's find seventh position. Here's what I mean. Whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. I'm gonna slide the entire hand. Coming down, we have new notes. Whole step, whole step, shift. So we're gonna practice that now. We're gonna find seventh position on E. Whole step, whole step, whole step. We're gonna keep our fingers down. Nice and loose, and we're going to slide a half step up with all the fingers in place. Now make sure on the way down in any melodic minor scale, you will never use your first finger in high positions. The reason is, on the E string, we try to, sh we try to shift on half steps and keep the distance between your notes, whole steps. So here's a B, whole step, whole step, half step shift, Next shift, it's again 7th position, oh, sorry, 6th, uh, D, C sharp. Right, so the positions are, we're in 8th, this is 6th, this is 3rd. Now let's do the shifts. You'll notice I keep my fingers down, but they're nice and light. 
Next, whole step, whole step. D to C sharp. If you want to practice the shift and the A string again, you can, but it's identical as you practice it going up, but you can. C sharp, D, third position, to first. So make sure you practice your shifts. Those are the big changes where you're most likely to make a mistake. Next, I will go through position by position, string by string, and highlight all the changes that you need to be aware of. So we start with first position with the high three. So the high two, high three stays, but we have a high four. So the big change is we switch the pinky from on the G string from regular position to a high position. So two and three stay the same, but you're gonna stretch your pinky. That doesn't change, but now we're shifting to what have been a regular three. And now it's gonna be all whole steps again. Whole step, whole step, whole step. This pattern is very unusual. Whenever we unusual, we usually never play the same music. So when you have all whole steps, it feels like a really big stretch. Make sure you Tell your fingers to go a whole step. And here's a big trick. You need to make sure that the one goes sharp. So the one changes. And because the one is what anchors your hand, it's gonna feel very awkward. So make sure you keep your fingers down. You can use your two as a reference to make sure your high one doesn't overshoot. So watch my pointer finger carefully. It's going to go high, but the two remains the same. Now here's a very tricky part. When you're on the E string, your one and twos are half steps with whole step shifts until you get to the high position. So watch. Half step, shift the whole step. Half step, shift the whole step. Now whole step, whole step, whole step, slide. So it's one, two, half step, shift, whole step. One, two, half step, shift, whole step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, slide. Now coming down, everything in the E string is whole steps except your shift. Whole step, whole step, half. Whole step, whole step, half. Whole step, whole step. And make sure you keep it in mind that a whole step on the violin is about 10% of the string's length. So in first position, when you go from the nut to the bridge, it's 10%, so it's a big whole step. But the next whole step is actually smaller because now the distance of the string is from the finger to the bridge and it's smaller. A cool little point of reference, your seventh position, the harmonic octave, everything becomes twice as small. If you notice, the string is the seventh position, is the exact half of a point between the nut and the bridge. So when you divide the string in half, you get the same note and it's an octave up. Everything becomes twice as small. So what was a half step is now a whole step. Right? So keep in mind, as you move up, everything has to get smaller. As you move down, everything has to get larger. Right? So keep that in mind as you practice your scale as well as your shifts. Next, we're going to add the slurs again slowly at 60 equals to eighth notes. So here's a tempo check. Notice that I held the last note very, very long, and actually I don't think that was long enough, but make sure that you switch and you play the last note up to a full whole note. I bet that's one of the most common mistakes that when you get nervous, we forget to hold the last note for a full whole note, and that's where a lot of points are lost. Now we're going to start at 60 equals to quarter note and move up to 80 and then to 100, which is your audition speed. So this is 60. This is 60 for a quarter note with slurs and as written. Next, we will go to 80 for quarter notes. This is 80 for quarter note, as written. You'll notice.
notice that I went a little bit extra fast than the last oppo to make sure that I have enough pull for the whole note. And now we will go audition speed at quarter note equals 100. If you have a hard time playing fast and keeping up, practicing slow is not necessarily going to help you. If you can do it slow, but you can't do it fast, then you need to actually practice fast. Turn the metronome onto 100 and play until you stop and just keep practicing until you can do it. One way to practice and be able to play faster is to add rhythms to your scale. If we keep the slurs as is, we can add longs and shorts. <laughs> Next, you could do short long. If you find this tutorial helpful, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and let me know if you want me to cover any more stuff.